What is going on, guys? Wise here, coming in with a recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. Uh, so it has been some time since I made a video. I've uh, been uh, did a couple episodes of Two Bees One Hive. They actually, were really fun. Had a lot of good, uh, a lot of fun doing that. But we had a two week break for CWL uh, over Easter, and uh, I didn't actually even get to do the last couple of CWL recaps. Just this, honestly, part of it is this 24 hour. Uh, lifetime on the replays really kills me sometimes you know I don't have a lot of time so we actually do we do sort of do um, uh, a lot of recordings for just inside the clan purposes um, but not any sort of official recaps for you guys so for that I apologize but I uh, did manage to get this one in uh, it was unfortunately a loss to two only co cats so that drops us to one and four on the season so that doesn't look good for us unfortunately but um, we're just, you know, taking this as a learning experience. We are getting better and better every every war. Um, we're looking and seeing a lot of successes within the war. So uh, for that, we are happy. We see the guys working hard. Everyone's just super positive in the clan. So that is really good to see as well. Um, and everyone's just kind of, we're getting back to having fun and just doing our thing. And we're getting better day by day. So uh, we did have some successes in this war, but hats off to Suomi, Co-Cat, uh, Cop-Cat, whatever. Um, they did have some really nice 10 v 10 triples that kind of ended up being the difference. We did have this 99% 11 v 11 attempt that was sort of a killer for us. Sorry, Robaz, that was, you deserve that one, man. I'll tell you that much. Absolutely, 99%. So that's a heartbreaker. And then we did have, if you take a look at the uh, details here, um, you can see our Town Hall 11s. Um, we had one dip fail. And then the 11 v 11, 99%. Other than that, they were perfect. And if you look at the enemy team, they only had one dip fail themselves. So awesome for them. Uh, definitely both sides in the 11 game were way above the CWL average. So uh, that kind of ends it up, uh, you know, when they end up putting up a couple extra Town Hall 10 triples, that sort of spelt the demise for us. So, uh, but we did have a lot of successes. We had three Town Hall 10 triples, uh, which we're, we're very happy. That's that's uh, our high, definitely on our higher end, I should say. Uh, you know, we are, we're usually we're usually around one, which is obviously bad. Um, but we're getting, we're working hard and it's starting to pay off. Uh, seeing a lot of successes in the clan, a lot of good teamwork going on. So honestly, I'm just going to jump right in. It's got a bunch of replays here I do want to show. So I want to make sure I can get to them all. I'm going to start right down at the bottom. This guy, JV Fuse, is uh, a swarm call up. We uh, called up for the war. So this is his first appearance in CWL invite. And he really shows, showed us this here, what he has. Uh, we did, uh, there, we had a few swarm call, a uh, few swarm call ups uh for this war and they all performed uh great you know we were really happy to have them and what that tells me is we got a lot of depth you know that's our that's our third family and the fact that you know we got some really good quality guys down there that's uh that's really hopeful for us in the future you know um it's, it's just a matter of of uh, constantly working, constantly working to get better, especially at that Town Hall 10 level. It's it's frustrating sitting at 10 and watching, you know, Town Hall 11s, sort of, you know, uh, um, you know the, the percentage rate of 11 versus 10 hits, uh, 11 versus 10 bullies is obviously extremely high. Uh, 9 versus 9 is pretty freaking high. And then you look at Town Hall 10 versus 10, which is like, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a mean mean game we'll just say it down all 10 and it can be very frustrating but we're all getting better at it and i uh, i see a lot of our hard work starting to pay off and that's absolutely fantastic you can see jb has just absolutely shredded this base nice little shat uh bolo he went in from three o'clock there took out a huge chunk of the base and it's basically just lalloway now from six up to nine up to 12 nice little ring around the base there um has a ton of balloons really the only threat is that wizard tower uh, at 12 o'clock there with the Tesla kind of in behind it. But with the giant pack of balloons he's got, just does not stand a chance. Down goes the cannon. And down goes the wizard tower. Threat is gone. All those uh, skellies pop. There's going to be far too far too much left uh, for even those skellies to even matter. So we're just going to go ahead and fast forward this. Apparently I'm going to hit fast forward. Bam! Tree in the back. JB is CWL invite debut. Nice job, man. All right. What do I got next? We got 36. We did have um, 
our 10 all nines actually we did uh well, did decent but we did end up having to use one bully we sort of chose to use that bully we had one attack left for the last town hall nine that had been hit multiple times so we obviously at that point the scout was more valuable than risking missing again with the nine and then losing the scout altogether. so we just decided to bully it and use the town hall nine as our scout um so is what it is but so that was a little unfortunate but we did have some guys like uh, lazarus ryan the great dr d my man clutch all have six packs so that was really helpful um really put up some numbers for us uh there's ryan on 40 but we're not gonna start with that one we started with gb um where am i 36 yeah there's ryan i knew it was ryan next so uh he's bringing this bitch attack nine which is uh, this very sort of long and narrow base. Uh, he's going to go ahead and get this funnel created at 3 o'clock. Basically take out this whole chunk of base down here. Just tons of, you know, all these witches with the healers. Just basically going to stand there, work on all this trash slowly but surely. Take it all down and really have no threats to them whatsoever. So goes ahead and drops a golem. Queen goes in behind. He's using this sort of natural L-shaped funnel to uh, get these bowlers and get his queen and king into the base. Poison down to take care of the clan castle troops. The other side of the bitch is going just great. I shouldn't say bitch, it's just witches. Witches with healers. Uh, they're both just now going to walk around the outside of the base, try and take basically all of these defenses out at the same time. Queen goes in, bowlers go in, into that core, down goes all that juicy stuff. It's going to be a really slow attack. You see, really, there's only a baby dragon and a few wizards for the back end cleanup. So it's just going to be a slow process now, but really you can see at this point in time, he's got the king now all the way to the other side of the base. He's got the queen in there doing damage as well. With that ability intact, full health at this point. Golem's in there doing tanking. Witches with healers at 12, witches with healers at 6. Just slowly chipping away at all these buildings. There's only Now there's only one Tesla, one wizard tower, a couple arch towers in this expo, you know, up in this sort of last dangerous spot of the base. Down goes the cannon. Queen's going to do work. Hit that ability. Take care of that expo. Down it goes. And it's only a matter of time at this point. Just going to give that a little fast forward. But there's skellies all over. He drops some wizards to help out. Down goes the mortar. And that is a three in the bag. Nice job, RTG. Beautiful. Like I said, six pack from this guy. Uh, 34. My man Clutch. <clears throat> Brings a few witches on this one, but uh, it's really just a straight Veiler attack. He's going to go ahead and get this little queen walk going. Oh, excuse me. Uh, walk the queen down and around this king and queen chamber. Get all of this stuff taken care of. And I believe uses the town hall or he sends the box in around this king. He's going to drop a CC of bowlers with a few witches more around 6 o'clock. Take care of all of this stuff. And just cut the Valks across the base. Um, you're going to see the big value the eight Valks get when they're under rage. And they just start popping walls open. Uh, it just opens up like the entire core of the base. And lets the queen, uh, queen and king uh, walk right in there and do some mop up. So he, down goes the bowlers. Down go those two healers. Down go those witches. Quickly take care of that mortar. No big deal. Especially with the healers on them. There's nothing this stuff is going to do to take care of this a uh, little pack of troops. Unfortunately, uh, all the skellies and everything sort of gets held up on the town hall for a moment. So that is a little bit unfortunate. And you can see the pack of skellies goes up while well, everything's sort of vulnerable. But with the healers on it, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so all that stuff is fine. The hound sort of walks over and locks onto the skellies. So that's kind of interesting because now the witches are locked onto the hound. So they follow it around. But it's kind of nice because now his queen is free to take care of these defenses in the core without getting caught up on this thing. Valks are in there. So you see this big, uh, they bust through the wall there. They bust through the wall in the core, bust through the wall on the other side, right into the expo chamber. Heal spell goes down, keeping everything going. Finally, that queen locks on the hound. So eventually here, this hound's going to burst, but it doesn't really matter. He's got a couple wizards and a minion left for cleanup at this point. Uh, this sort of 12 to 9 section is a bit of a threat because really with the two Teslas, two wizard towers in there, um, Unless his healers are in, healing his troops at that point, uh, you know, the bowlers and witches could be in big threat, but it doesn't matter. Everything sort of converges on it. At the same time, 
Queen steps up, takes care of the wizard tower. King's going to bust on through that wall and start doing the cleanup at 12 o'clock, right as the witches and, or the witch, I should say, and bowler rounds the bend. Unfortunately, does lose the bowler, but no big deal. Queen's in there doing their things. Matter of cleanup at this point. Well, clean up in two Teslas. Down they go. See you later. This tree in the bag for clutch. Nice job, man. Clutch coming in clutch. Actually, I know Clutch had, I'm pretty sure, two six-pack because he's in the Invicta um, CWL as well. So uh, I'm pretty sure he had double six-pack. So that's, that's pretty good. <clears throat> I know it's time on nine six-packs, but still still worth noting that's for sure um next 29 Laz. i think brings another witch attack here yep so he's gonna go ahead and bring four healers basically just put five witches on either corner um sorry i think he drops them at 12. um on either corner just wants to walk down the sides of the base yeah there go the other five witches a couple healers on each of them just keeping them going it's really not a lot unless the healers get taken out there's not a lot these defenses can do against these witches um so guys are really starting to exploit that at town online i find so as you can see they're going to go ahead and walk he didn't even drop the two healers i just noticed now on the one o'clock oh they're there so down go the healers right the witches are just going to stay alive they are going to get sort of stuck on this de storage while these wizard towers and crap are there but with the healers, it just doesn't matter. They just stand there and beat on it until it goes down. Takes a little extra time, but no big deal. So King, Queen, and Bowlers jump right on into that core. Smashing all that juicy stuff down. Expo 1 goes down. Expo 2 goes down. Queen gets poisoned. King's about to lock on her with those Bowlers. So now goes that defensive King, Queen. Bam, bam, bam. Compartments toast. So really just guts this base now with this kill squad. And has these witches on the outside doing cleanup. Again, it's a very slow process. It doesn't really matter how burst. Poison is still down. So there go those pups. King even jumps out to help those witches out. Queen's going to go ahead and stand in the core and finish off all of this stuff. While these witches on the 6 o'clock are going to round the bed. So really at this point, it's only a matter of time. Really, like With all those witches, with the healers, a couple archer towers and a cannon will not do a thing. Go ahead and fast forward this. That is a tree in bag for last. Nice job, man. Bam. Barely holds on to that one, actually. But those witches, they just go forever. It's just, it's crazy. I don't know. Uh, what's next? What do I got for you? Number 22. Uh, bam. Dr. D. <clears throat> so he's bringing a good old Shap, uh, Shap Bolo. Uh, I think he goes in from 6 o'clock. Yeah, here come the golems. One on, one on each of these defenses. Nice little anchors. You know, once these go down, I mean, I guess that border might have been a bit of a threat, but no big deal because he's just going to go ahead and send in the test, send in the other wall breakers, open up a 6 o'clock tip. Defensive king goes down. Bam, cannon goes down. Everything's going to walk right down into this air defense. Jump spell goes, cutting across the queen over to that next air defense. Basically going to gut this base um, and only leave a, a couple small sections to Lalo. He only brings 12 balloons here, but it's more than enough. You're going to find out. Three bowlers walking is a bit of concern, but what I noticed when I saw that was because of the where this uh, elixir storage is, he ends up getting the mortar, uh, or sorry, the wizard tower out of the deal and ends up getting the mortar. So they still got decent value. And as you can see, King and Queen are still going in that core. Finally, that uh, Hound is mopped up, so the Queen's now going to start getting some good value on the rest of those buildings. So here comes the Hounds from 3 o'clock, 1 and 1. few balloons on each defense. And he's going to go ahead and just slowly work the balloons into this base. And you can see very quickly these Wizard Towers go down. There's no air defenses remaining. So the, the full health Hounds is sitting there. The Wizard Towers probably just got away with the one Hound at this point. Definitely could have got away with one out. Six more balloons would have been nice to sort of feed him in from this point. But it really doesn't matter. Got clean up all over the base. Still has his queen in there. Still has his king in there, even doing a little bit of tanking. Would have been nice, so nice to have this like one haste spell at this point. But defenses start going down. 
only a matter of time. <laughs> See what I mean? Still, it's like two, one full health hound or three quarters health and a half health hound. Definitely could have got away with one there, but obviously don't want to risk that. But doesn't matter. It's treating the bag for our man, Dr. D. Nice job, man. Uh, next up, I got 17. This is our first 10v10 triple. Blainer going in here. Uh, very interesting attack. Uh, bringing the 12 bowlers, so very heavy on the bowlers. Only brings the six hogs, and you're going to see a clan castle of max hogs come out here. 10v10, I loved it. Uh, the idea here was with the Inferno Towers both on the same side of this base, and the possibility to, to really negate the queen. You're going to see how this works out here. Uh, nice little trades with the bowlers. Drops like two bowlers. This bowler, in fact, gets like one, two, three, four, five, six. I think he gets like seven, eight buildings. He even gets this cannon, which is absolutely awesome. But you can see this queen's going to work in with this golem here. Opens up the wall so the queen has access to this inferno tower, which is just nice and dandy. As soon as this uh, storage goes down, she's going to step up and take care of the inferno. So sweet. I think he even gets... The uh, Wizard Tower out of the deal. <clears throat> Goes in and drops two more golems on both of these mortars. Going to uh, follow that up with a few wizards. Just make sure that funnel gets created. King on the bottom side here. Going to work everything in and up. The goal is to get this other Inferno Tower out of the way. And you're going to see this happen. He's got, just keep in mind, eight, ten bowlers coming in here. Um, so it's a pretty heavy kill squad. Does lose the queen there, but look at everything she got. She took care of this whole bottom section really like i said as long as the queen defensive queen goes down and uh this could inferno tower department he is going to now send in the hogs few on each of these defenses here goes ahead and has a clan castle of max hogs he's going to send in from this uh at the 12 o'clock air defense <clears throat> there's only a couple point defense so he doesn't lose many hogs going in there's a couple spring traps here but it's going to be no big deal and you're going to see as soon as the bomb tower explodes Gets a heal for the uh, the uh, three o'clock compartment. There it goes. Heal those hogs up, and this is gonna be a three star in the bag. Nice job, Blaine. Very very nice. Down goes the expo. Down goes the cannon. This base does not stand a chance. Still has that golem in there. But it don't matter. Blam blam. Just gotta get that town hall out of the way too. There she is. So uh, next triple I got here for you. This was uh, Chad Fowler using my account, actually. Um, he had a few different shots at this base. We had a good plan for it, a couple high 90s. Knew we could get it. So a few of us planned, all a bunch of us planned it, and it makes more sense for the guy who's done it, attacked it already a couple times to get that extra shot. Um, so <clears throat> you're going to see here, uh, we, there's a few changes we made. First of all, he dropped that this balloon here to make sure this uh, arch tower goes down on this little entry and bam, he gets it. So both arch towers and the baby dragon, pretty good value on that stuff there. Goes ahead and gets this wizard down here for a few buildings at 12 o'clock. So things are looking nice and pretty. Gets an early minion. That was why he needed the arch tower down here because he wants to start getting this trash out of the way nice and early. So he gets that minion down, which is perfect. So now he sends in a couple of giants with his suicide queen straight at this Tesla farm. I think it's a very poor, sorry, poor placement for his Tesla farm because it's with the air defense and you see what I mean with 10 troops base to protect the queen. She gets an air defense few Teslas out of the way, and an Arch Tower, and like a bunch of defenses. Just huge value out of that uh, giant queen combo there. And now sends in the rest, sends in this uh, CC full of bowlers, his king. Everything's just going to hop right in, take out a big chunk of this base, gets this wizard tower out of the way just in time, gets the expo down, and boom, starts his Lalo nice and quickly. In comes that first town, few balloons down, he gets these four balloons on this mortar few balloons on this archer tower and the idea is he needs to get to this inferno tower as soon as possible look how quickly it goes down perfect placement on that spell a few more balloons in on these arch towers on the outside a couple more in from uh on these defenses at six o'clock 
going to converge everything now onto this core with a nice little haste spell. And you see it sort of was a scary moment because this sweeper went down initially in his first attack. Did not go down here. So look, it gives him trouble. But what I loved here was his patience. Waited and waited, then gets the haste spell down at the perfect moment, just buying just enough time to get to that sweeper. The rest of his balloons hit the haste, cut across to the expo. Really, there's only the wizard tower and inferno. Down goes the wizard tower. Down goes the Inferno Tower. Beautiful. Has the, uh, oh, and I will note that I was spotting him on this attack. And one of the things we noticed was the cleanup. Um, getting cleanup minions at the right spots. And we had planned to have one, and he didn't drop it when he should have. And I had noticed, and I'm like, dude, minion at 12 o'clock, drop it, drop it. So he dropped it. And you're going to see this, and I'm pretty sure that absolutely saved the day. Because you're going to see this balloon he drops here. There's very little time. Like, he has, like, no time left whatsoever. And you see this balloon. It was, if that Builder's Hut was still up, that minion wasn't dropped, the balloon would have went to the Builder's Hut. This full health Dark Elixir storage barely, barely went down. Like, there was a second left. Maybe not, because that other balloon ended up showing up at that last second. But I'm pretty sure that call on the minion to kill the Builder's Hut at that exact moment to force that balloon over to the Dark Elixir storage ended up making it to three star. But love you, Chad. Great job, my friend. Uh, moving on, number nine, CBG. Nice little bitch attack. CBG's our bitch master. Um, immediately at the beginning of the war, recognized this boxish sort of base. Um, knew he had a good shot if he could just blow open the wall. Um, or does he even blow up one? I think he's double jumps because of the huge sort of core he's going to get access to. Um, nice little uh, heavy on the witches sort of at 3 o'clock. Lighter on the witches at 6 o'clock. Gets all those bowlers going right up into that first Inferno Tower compartment. It goes down super quickly, which is great. Nice heal spell the bowlers are going to walk into. Oh, sorry about that. And gets that uh, defensive queen down. Defensive king is about to go down. Just basically, the core is getting gutted. A little bit of a split on those bowlers that sort of walk down to this um, sort of 7 to 8 o'clock section. But it kind of works out. And you can see what I mean. Like These bitch attacks do um, have a little bit of luck aspect to it, right? Because um, it's so impossible to tell exactly the domino effect that exponentially happens at Town Hall 10. Exactly how it's going to play out. But it's the, the troop comp that is only strong enough to do that so um you can kind of see how things work out it's got skellies on the outside doing tanking still has the skellies with a few bowlers doing tanking up there skellies working around really just wrapping around this base while his queen mops up from the inside <laughs> unfortunately he has this golem giant over here but it sort of is key at the end of the raid because uh it is sort of a close call by the end here because you know see the stuff start pittering out Really only has two witches and a bowler left there. Only has one bowler left over at 3 o'clock. Queen's working on walls. But this giant and golem are about to break through this wall and step up to this bomb tower and tank this uh, archer tower and Tesla while the queen steps up and finishes everything off. So it's sort of, this is what I'm talking about, like that exact perfect sort of sequence of events happening. Um, not to take anything away from CBG because he does it with quite good frequency. But... Um, a lot, a lot of the time, that's what it comes down to, right? The golem stepping up there is absolutely perfect because if it didn't get through the wall and the queen stepped up here with that much health left and nothing was tanking, she probably wouldn't have made it and there wasn't enough. He does have the skelly spell too, which is nice. Uh, but with that mortar there, that probably would. If, the, if he didn't have the queen there, it would have been a problem. But as you can see, it wasn't a problem. It's a tree in the bag from a man. O-C-C-B-G. <clears throat> Second wave. New since my friend Lime Killer left the clan. Um, CBG's like my new uh, FC buddy. Town Hall 10. Anyways, so Omi Kokat, great war. You guys stepped it up. Um, I think we really had a chance here to win this. We had just come through uh, boss. I know that would have been so glorious if you had got it. Um, you definitely deserve that, like I said at the beginning. But that one, it came through, put us at 113. And then, you know, one of our boys or one of our, we did have, I will mention as well, top of our three triples we had there. Uh, 81, 87, 87. Probably had one more. Maybe a town hall 11 cleaned it up. 71. 
yeah, I don't know. But it, we all had some good stuff, like I said. Uh, we were not disappointed with our performances for. Um, there's definitely more things we've learned, and we're continuing to grow on that, and that's that's awesome. So 2.0, love you. Guys, going to call it a night. That'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help the bag that next tree start. Till then, I'm out.